Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with part three of uh, low kickback chains. Uh, this is the final part, done some more research, had some fantastic comments. That's the best part about YouTube, where people can uh, put in their comments and add to it. So in the future, people can look at the videos and look at part one, part two and part three and uh, can learn much more uh, about the subject. So first of all, I found out that and... Uh, that there are rules and regulations that chainsaw companies have to go by when producing small chainsaws up to 62 cc's. And it's called ANSI, that's the, the name of uh, uh, the regulations and guidelines they've got to follow. It's 5.11 of ANSI B175.1-2000. So it refers to small chainsaws less than 62 cc's that should not or should have less than 45 degree kickback angle so yeah for a 3.2 cubic inch motor which is less than 62 cc's so therefore what they're saying that any chainsaw that's sold out there that's under 62 cc's must be fitted with some sort of kickback chain uh, that will not result in the kickback coming more than a 45 degree angle. So that's what they're saying. So therefore, you'll find out a lot of those chainsaws or all of those chainsaws being sold all around the world will be fitted with, especially the steel ones, are fitted with this type of uh, drive link bumper or drive link raker. And long as it passes those regulations and it doesn't go any more than 45 degrees in the air once you strike the front of the nose, that the inertia uh, caused from that strike doesn't go more than 45 degrees, that passes the test. And this is why I was probably saying uh, in the other videos about these sticking slightly higher uh, than the traditional raker. So the other thing that I found out, and there was other papers written there, one particular paper was interesting where they compared uh, rather than drive link rakers, uh, tie bar rakers. So they found out that if you fitted on a lot of the proper anti-kickback chains, that in this region here, the actual tie bar is fitted with a, a raised raker, which is level with the standard raker and it comes into play when it rotates around here like how we were describing in the other videos how now that this drive link raker starts to protrude higher than the standard raker and gives protection so the paper deals with that and i'll just give you the name of that you could do a google search if you want to read that paper it makes some interesting uh reading it's called cutting performance comparison of low kickback saw chain so if you were to google that in i'll just read that out again cutting performance comparison of low kickback saw chain and that will go into a lot of explanations about what works better. And the final conclusion of that paper was that all the tie bar bumper rakers, if you that's really what they are, they're rakers, uh, that particular tie bar raker will definitely sit higher than the standard uh, raker, protecting the user uh, from severe kickback. Because... In all the papers that I've read, and there's been quite a few, and I'm not going to go over all the papers that I have read, you can't eliminate kickback. It's just impossible. It's just that's the way it is. You're going to get kickback. Whole idea is that you reduce the kickback or can so that it doesn't cause an injury, so that it, you're not trying to go past that 45 degree angle. If you can keep that below the 45 degree angle, that's okay. But it still comes back to my rule 
that you just don't work in this area. I haven't got the statistics for people who use uh, carving chainsaws, or whether they're whether the accident uh, rate is uh, much higher. I think that that uh, ANSI uh, B one seven five point one came into effect because, uh, and I, know, I can't even tell you what year it came in, but there was a lot of accidents, chainsaw accidents, so. I think they realised that the industry needed a bit of a change in standards uh, why are all these accidents happen and you know, people uh, being injured through kickback. But as I said in some of the other previous videos, if you can avoid using this area with your chainsaw, uh, then you won't get kickback. So if you put this well and truly under the log, if you're cutting underneath and you put this well and truly underneath the log then you won't have that problem with kickback and if you're pruning small type uh, limbs you know again avoid putting this red zone anywhere near any timber and you won't have kickback it's pretty much as simple as that so anyway that's the the third and final part i uh, just wanted to go over a, a few things there so there's some more interesting reading for those that may be interested it's just an interesting subject like anything else. Uh, it's something else that I've learned, and by making the video, it passes this information on to other people. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Bye for now.